Hello, welcome to my video on Bill Potts, the companion for the 10th series of Doctor Who. Obviously played by Pearl McKay rather brilliantly, I thought she was a great companion. The character herself was named after the first Doctor William Hartnell, known as Bill to his friends. And the girl from the pilot was called Heather, which is William Hartnell's wife's name. And she ends up with Heather at the end, so it's a cool little twisty little... I don't know, meta thing? Is that a fourth wall thing? I think that's a fourth wall thing. Now, Bill's character was good. Her ending was shite, and I'll get to that later. Bill was the first openly gay companion in Doctor Who. Which is a bit of a lie, because I always thought Captain Jack was openly gay. In his debut episode, he was doing all the sneaky World War II things, wink wink, I'm not gay things, where, like, you know, slapping his captain on the ass, and they were talking about, oh, not now, Jackie boy. Isn't that openly gay? They never outwardly had to say anything about it, but, you know, he's a 51st century man. It was just there. I, I didn't think that was hidden. Is it just not openly gay because they didn't go, Jack's gay, until Torchwood? It's, it, you know, so first openly gay character as it was outwardly said. Now, she was not openly gay in the show to her adoptive mother, whose name I have forgotten. I really thought this was going to be a plot point later with the inclusion of her Earth family, how with Rose, how Jackie and that was in it. I thought that was going to happen again. I thought it would have been a good thing to be able to have an episode where amidst fighting monsters... She had to come out to her adoptive mother as, hey, I'm a lesbian, you know, let's be cool with that. And, you know, she would have been cool with that. There might have been some type of drama. She obviously didn't feel comfortable coming out to her yet. So we probably would have had some background on that. It's just something that irked me that we didn't get that. We just kind of got, Bill's gay, Bill's black. There was a bit of, a lot of nods towards racism and, um... In the Eaters of Light, there was definitely a nod towards her sexuality with um, the scene with the Romans where all the Romans are bisexual and Bill just likes women and that's the weird thing, uh, which I actually thought was a little bit forced. I, I didn't, wasn't particularly fond of that scene. Continuing with her lesbianism, her final words um, in The Doctor Falls, or maybe her final words, where she says to the Doctor, I'm just glad that you knew that I liked people like me. Um, it took me a little bit to clue in on that, but I think that was about the fact that she was openly gay to the, with the Doctor. And he didn't care. He never once said anything about it. Like, the Romans said it was wrong. There was obviously something to do with why she wouldn't tell her adoptive mother. The Romans didn't say it was wrong, right? They said it was weird. But her adoptive mother, she didn't tell her. But the Doctor knew. The Doctor knew the whole time. And he didn't care. He, he, it never factored in with him that that was a thing, that it mattered, from what we show. But yeah, she seemed very, she liked that. That was obviously uh, something I would have liked to have explored with her family more. But anyway, whatever. Bill was shown to be a very strong-willed character, which is a running thing these days. All the companions are really strong-willed. She defeated the monks through the power of her memories of her mother, which were falsified by the Doctor. So, she's very good at imagining things. Yeah. So, you know, she's a very strong-willed companion. Even shooting the Doctor when she thought he was no longer there to help and that he was the threat. Now, I noticed that Bill's character follows a bit of a trend that the companions in Moffat's run have kind of developed. Now, towards the end of Amy and Rory's run, they developed independence from the Doctor. So, the Doctor popped in and out of their lives, and they travelled with him in between those moments while they still lived their lives. Um, this was then cemented with Clara, who was teaching and popping in and out. I sent the Doctor for coffee, you know, it took three weeks, whatever. She wasn't with the Doctor 100% of the time, unlike, say, uh, Rose or Martha or Donna. Which I think is a, um, a nice development that we're showing companions who have their own lives away from travelling in the TARDIS. And so Bill had that. She was the Doctor's student and she had adventures with him 
that had gaps in between them. So she wasn't 100% on the TARDIS 100% of the time, which I like. I the other continuation is the mirroring of Clara and Bill's departures. Clara and Bill both died towards the end of their series, but then were resurrected. So, Clara dies uh, by the hand of the Raven, then the Doctor resurrects her, so to say, with Gallifreyan technology, bringing her back as a set point in time, frozen, whatever, and she goes off to have adventures with um, me. Me, of course, Maisie Williams. That's right, I think so. Now, Bill, of course, which we'll get to her ending now, was shot, becomes a Cyberman, thanks to the devious plans of the Master, and then, after what should have been a heartbreaking finale where Bill dies as a Cyberman, a friend from earlier in the season comes back, resurrects her as a time-space-travelling ship being, the same as the pilot, and they travel off into time and space together for adventures. There's a real mirror there. Uh, the fact Clara dies is brought back. Happy ending. Bill dies, becomes a Cyberman, should have died. Happy ending. Um, that's why I don't like Bill's ending. It's There wasn't enough emotional investment for her to come back. Her dying, I thought it worked better. I thought that uh, it definitely, yeah, definitely worked better. Of course, her final moments on the show, she uses to save the Doctor, which is great. Although, she doesn't know about regeneration, at least on screen. She hasn't been told about it. So she well and truly believes the Doctor is dead. She put him on the TARDIS to rest in final peace, which he then... Rejuven re 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 rejuvenates and walks out onto what we can assume is Mondas with the First Doctor. Very interesting. So to summarise Bill Potts as a character, I would say she was good. She was really good. Uh, Pearl McKay is a good actress. I actually liked her. Her face is just, it's different. Her hair was great. Her sense of style was good. I really liked that she didn't, she changed it up a bit. Unlike, like, Clara was always really prim and proper, whereas Bill had a bit more of a Ace vibe about her. The leather jacket makes me think of Ace. But the character's downfall is a lack of time to explore her. Um, I think that's what it came down to. Bill was obviously introduced for one season. She, they, they've left it open, she could come back. But as it stands, she was introduced for one season. Now, so was, I don't know, Martha and Donna. But for some reason, Bill just didn't get the exploration that they did. I feel her death as a Cyberman lacked the emotional impact that, say, Donna forgetting her memories had. That was sad. Bill was a little bit of a let down. I really like the character, I would really love her to come back so we can continue to explore her further. But yes, a little bit of a let down. Um, like, subscribe, comment, tell me your thoughts on Bill and I'll upload some new videos soon. Thanks.